So our speech, our actions, our thoughts, are a burden. You know, they're a burden that prevent us from benefiting others, from obscuring the, uh, because of the, uh, it's like the tarnish on a mirror, or the clouds in the sky, or like the, mm, like a, it's like a veils. There's a pure nature, then there's a one veil, it's ignorance. Then another veil is this habit of ignorance. Then there's the, the kleshas, the conflict, afflictive emotions. Then the karma. So karma is action. So that we can adjust, like learn dharma, learn what to accept and what to reject. and begin to intentionally give up negative actions. That's virtuous. And when our habits have decreased to the point that we have freedom to think or to do or to speak intentionally virtuous, then we increase and get, get used to, get comfortable with practicing virtue, get comfortable with with uh, speaking in virtuous ways and get uncomfortable about negative speech, negative actions. Make it so it's not, not, you don't feel natural speaking in an abusive or a negative way or acting in a negative way. It's just not natural to you. And you make that. You make it that way. You make it so that a negative speech, you don't, it's, 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 it's not natural, you don't like it. You have to make it, you have to know what's the, what are the disadvantages of negative speech? What are the advantages of, of positive speech? What are the disadvantages of negative actions? Advantages of positive actions. What are the disadvantages of thinking about others in a negative way? What are the advantages of thinking kindly and compassionately about others? We really have to make that, make that a known object, a known target. Then we're not just forcing ourselves or trying to be well-behaved, but it's really about knowing why. Why give up negative actions? It's hard. So we really need to think uh, almost, I don't know, in the beginning. You know, for people like us, we should spend maybe more time trying to in understanding why we should give up negative actions, why we should practice virtuous actions, than just always forcing ourselves in both those directions. You know? We should really put a lot of time into why. When you, negative speech comes out, maybe you feel bad. You go, oh, that was, uh, now I feel bad. But you really should think also intellectually, use your cognitive ability to understand why that's negative and explore it and, and like follow the, the, a train of thought uh, that will really convince you 
that it's to both your disadvantage and everyone else's disadvantage. It makes it easier to, you, you automatically shun negativity because of the power of your knowing, the power of your wisdom. And virtue will magnetize you. Well, what do you say magnetize? Yeah, it'll, you'll be attracted to virtue if you understand what the benefits are. Why practice virtue? If you understand what the benefits are, then you'll be attracted to it. In fact, the more, you're, the more you understand the benefits of virtue, the more obsessive you become about it, the more compulsive you are at uh, virtue. Become compulsive about looking for ways. There's not enough opportunity. I need more opportunities for virtue, you know. From the bodhisattva point, once, and from the bodhisattva, from the point of view of attaining enlightenment, then we re recognize that we have these obscurations, we have these veils. They are impermanent. Why, they're imper why are they impermanent? Because they're made up of parts. Karma is made up of parts. Kleshas are made up of parts. Even anger is made up of parts. What kind of parts is anger made up of? A beginning, a middle, and an end. Those are parts. It's impermanent, therefore. It wasn't, it is, and it won't be. Could even be the, the, the same object. One time, the same one object, same object, desire. The next minute, the same object, anger. Clashes are totally impermanent. Therefore, they can be removed. Just like karma can be removed, clashes can be removed. So again, to repeat what I said before, when we recognize kleshas and karma, kleshas, actions we know. That's why it says in the like a Buddhist uh, teaching, give up the negative actions completely, practice virtue perfectly, tame your mind. It's because why? And always negative actions first, because because that we know we know so much about negative actions. So there's a big field of practice there. Plus you can't practice virtue and do negative actions. And if you, you know, first you give up negative actions, then practice virtue, then that becomes, that virtue becomes the foundation for taming your mind. You also can't tame your mind if your mind is habitually drawn towards negativity. All you're doing is making yourself suffer by trying to meditate or tame your mind. Well, first start with your actions, physical actions. St stop hitting people out of anger, you know, if you want to meditate. So we just can't promise to not have anger. Can't promise I'll never get angry at you again. You know, we can't really do that. I mean, we say that as a way of expressing our commitment to trying to. But just the idea of trying implies failure, you know. Like it's well known that, like you can't say, well, if people want to give up smoking cigarettes, they have to stop saying, I'm going to try and stop smoking, right? That's kind of a well-known 
science now. It's, you have to say, I am quitting. <laughs> not, I will try not to smoke. You know, you're already setting yourself up for percentages. I know I won't be able to completely give up. So, <laughs> uh, clashes, we, I said, we, we can't. We can commit ourselves to, to doing the best we can. And we can't benefit others if we are so burdened, if our, hab if our negative habits are so uh, easy, you know, if negativity is so easy. So we have to kind of denormalize our negative habits and their roots. You know, the tendencies, just like a that the poster, you you can lay it out flat and it all looks good. You know, ah, what a beautiful thing, beautiful picture. You know, what a beautiful, great, what a great Dharma person you are. But then you let it go, and it naturally rolls up again. You, you know, so you naturally you know just kind of give vent and blow up again. Then you can't see anything. And you're not, you're not a Dharma person in that moment. You've even lost your precious human birth. You know. No freedom. You're lost. You know, you're lost. Those moments, it's like then you're in some other realm. So these veils are removed through purification. One after another after another, karma, the kleshas, the habitual tendencies, and the, this nature, which always, from beginningless time, has been the case, becomes evident. So we can, in one way, we can think all, all Buddha Shakyamuni's eighty-four thousand topics of teachings are purification. We can think that way. Antidotes. 